What's up, people? It's been a long time. With dumb dog moves out of the way, we are back to read Goosebumps, Girl Who Cried Monster, Chapter 14. Are you ready? Because I am. Everything seemed to be taking so long today. What time really? Was time really in slow motion? Or did everything seem so slow because my pulse was racing so fast? I was so eager to get to my proof and get out of there. But Mr. Mormon was taking his good old time. He shuffled through a stack of papers, reading some of them, folding some of them in half, and tossing them in the wire trash basket beside his desk. He hummed to himself as he read through the entire stack. Finally, he got to the bottom of the pile and tossed the final sheet away. Now, I thought, now you'll start your monster routine, won't you, Mr. Morton? But no. He lifted a stack of books from his desk and carried them to the shelves. Humming loudly, he began returning the books to their places. I pressed myself into the shadows, hoping he wouldn't come to my row. I was near the far wall in front of the row of my micro micro she machines. <laughs> Please, let's get on with it, I begged silently. But when he finished with his first stack, Mr. Mortman returned to his desk and hoisted up another pile of books to a place. I'm going to be late for dinner, I realized, with a growing sense of dread. My parents are going to kill me! <laughs> oh, God. The thought made me chuckle. Here I was, locked inside this creepy old library with a monster, and I was worried about getting scolded for being late for dinner. I could hear Mr. Mortman, but I couldn't see him. He was somewhere among the rows of shelves, replacing books. Suddenly, his humming grew louder. I realized he was in the next aisle. I could see him over the tops of the books on the shelf on my right. And that meant he could see me! Grimmin, grimmin. With panic, I ducked and dropped to the floor. Had he heard me? Had he seen me? I didn't move. I didn't breathe. He continued to hum to himself. The sound grew fainter as he moved in the other directions. Letting out a silent sigh of relief, I climbed back to my feet. Gripping the camera tightly in my right hand, I peered around the side of the shelf. I heard his shoes shuffling along the floor. He reappeared, his bald head shiny in the light afternoon sunlight from the window and made his way slowly to the desk. The clock on the wall ticked noisily. My hand gripped the camera. My hand gripping the camera was cold and clammy. Watching him shuffle things around inside his desk drawer, I suddenly lost my nerve. This is stupid, I thought. Really bad idea. I'm going to be caught. As soon as I step out and snap the picture, he'll see me. He'll chase me. He won't let me get out of the library with this camera. He won't let me get out of here alive. Turn and run, a voice inside my head commanded. Quick, while you have the chance, turn and run. Then another voice interrupted that one. He isn't going to turn into a monster tonight, Lucy, the voice said. You're wasting your time. You're getting yourself all nervous and scared for no reason. My mind was spinning, whirring with voices and frightened thoughts. I heard against, I leaned against hard against the wooden shelf, steadying myself. I closed my eyes for a moment, trying to clear my head. How many shots can you take? A voice in my head asked. Can you shoot off three or four before he realizes what's happening? You only need one good shot, another voice told me. One good clear shot will be the proof you need. You'd better hope he's humming very loudly, another voice said. Otherwise, he'll hear your camera shutter click. 
Turn and run! Another voice repeated. Turn and run! You only need one good shot! Don't let him hear your voice, shutter click! I stepped forward and peered around the shelf. Mr. Mortman, humming happily away, was reaching for the fly jar. Yes! I cried silently. Finally! Dinner time, my timid friends. I heard him say in a pleasant sing-song, and he was starting to unscrew the jar lid. His head began to grow. His eyes bulged, his mouth twisted open and enlarged. In a few seconds, his monstrous head was bobbing above his shirt. His snake-like tongue flickered out from his black mouth as he removed the jar lid and pulled out a handful of flies. Dinner time, my timid friends. Picture time! I thought, gathering my courage. I raised the camera to my eye. Uh, with a trembling hand, I gripped it tightly with both hands to keep it from shakering. Then, holding my breath, I leaned as far forward as I could. Mr. Mormon was downing his first handful of flies, chewing noisily, humming as he chewed. I struggled to center him in the viewfinder. I was so nervous, the camera was shaking all over the place. I'm so glad he's humming, I thought, raising my finger to the shutter button. He won't hear the camera click. Mm, he won't hear the camera click. I will be able to take more than one shot. Okay, okay. He was still enjoying his first batch of tender flies. No! I told myself. I was about to push the button when Mr. Morton suddenly turned away. With a gasp, I stopped myself just in time. My pulse was pounding at the, my temple so hard I could barely see straight. What was he doing? He was reaching for another jar. He set it down on his desk. And screw the lid. I raised the camera again and squinted at him through the viewfinder. What did he have in his jar? Something was fluttering in there. It took me a while to realize they were moths. White moths. He closed his fist. Closed his fist around one and shoved it. Hungrily into his mouth, another moth flirted out of the jar before he could close the lid. Mr. Ortman's eyes bulged like toadstools growing out from his balloon-like head. His mouth twisted and coiled as he chewed the moth. Taking another deep breath and holding it, I leaned forward as far as I could. Steadied the camera in front of my eye. And snap the shutter. But stuff happens sometimes. Repeat lines over and over again. <laughs> well, let this teach you a lesson about books, y'all. Until next time. Keep it sleazy, pumpkin cheesy.